Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. Hey, today we're going to finish up our bore that we did yesterday. We're going to do the honing, the chamfering, and what else? Uh, ring gap, and a final measurement of the cylinder to make sure that we have our uh, 1, 1 1.5 to 1.8 or whatever it is. Uh, I, I've I think I'm going to rule on the the bigger, the 1.8, and you know if it goes to two, that's okay too. But I'm going to try to keep it at 1.8. Uh, that's uh, one eight. Let's see. No, I'm sorry. That'll be uh, point zero zero one eight. That's what we want, and that's uh, imperial measurement. So let me go over and I'll show you the hone again real quick and then we'll get with it. Okay, this again is the, uh, the old, I think it's 1966 model Sun and Hone. And it's, uh, it's really good on cylinders. Uh, I, use the, uh, I use this type of setup so that you don't get hung up in ports. Uh, if you try to use a single one on each side, you can get hung up in your ports on these two strokes. So you don't want to do that. Uh, sometimes I use one that has scrapers on the side. I'm not going to do it on this one. I think I'm just going to use it as this is. And uh, uh, if, if I need to change, I'll, I will do it. But uh, this hone gives us a flood oil that comes out. I usually try to stick it in the port somewhere and that way it keeps everything lubricated while you're going. Uh, this control down here controls the pressure and this one up here controls the size and the pressure I can tell on the gauge how much I'm getting. Uh, other than that, very simple machine. Uh, you just don't run it too hard, too tight and you're able to hold it and do your stroke with it. So let me get set up and we'll get right to it. Okay, getting, uh, getting hone ready here. We've got it, I've got it pretty well sized. Looking pretty nice. A long way to go. Yeah, we're getting there. It's time to start checking.
think you can see that. See we're at uh, about not quite one and a half thousandths. We're at one four on that one. Turn the cylinder around another. Okay, I think we've got her about where we want it. So, the next thing we need to do is uh, chamfer the ports, but before we do that, I'm going to go through the measurements just one more time here. Okay. Go uh, exhaust port to intake port. Oops, put that around where we can see it. And I decided to go with about 18, 17 to 18. There's 17 and a half, maybe. Turn the cylinder 90 degrees. And Again, about 17 and a half, and then turn it over. Seventeen and a half, eighteen. So there you go. I think we're good. I think I feel good about it. We've got. Um, Piston all ready to go in. All we've got to do now is uh, chamfer our ports, chamfer the top, and uh, we'll be done with it. So let me uh, kind of get set up to do that. Okay, guys, I'm going to start the uh, chamfering here a little bit, and it's uh, the most important part is the in this case the horizontal ones here here everything that runs along uh, the way the rings would catch in it these on this side aren't that important you still need to chamfer them but these are the ones that are real can be a real problem and you don't want to remove anything unless you're uh, unless you're porting, all you want to do is just just uh, barely roll the edges. And it can grab pretty easy. And make sure you get up and get your transfers. Get a little less coarse bit, I think. Hang on.
I know you can't see a lot of this, but You gotta have a lot of light. The more light, the better. You just wanna take the edge off, just feel the port after you do it make sure that it's not sharp Okay, I think we're I think we're good. Just feel it, kind of run your finger up and down, and if it if you feel that edge, then it's going to catch the rings. If it feels smooth, you're you're good to go. And don't forget to. Take care of your edge right here. Again, your fingers your uh, your best gauge. Feels sharp, it is sharp. And don't forget the the top. And then I'm going to go back with a cartridge roll and sandpaper and touch it up. And same thing in here. Get back up on the stand so you can see a little better.
Well, I'm sure you get the point. Just be careful. Now, one thing that you want to do, if you're going to do porting, you, you want to do it before you bore. You want to get your porting done, then bore it, and then touch up around your ports. But uh, if, you, if you're going to do any serious hogging of the ports, you want to do them before you bore. Because you, you're in there, you're in there with these, uh, with these bits, and they can get away from you and spin around the cylinder, so you don't want to ruin that. So if you're going to do some serious porting, take care of it before you bore it, and then just clean it up afterwards. It's all right. Okay, then don't forget to uh, check your piston ring end gap. Just put it in there and then bring it down equally with the piston. And thirteen thousandths, about thirty three millimeter. They're calling for twenty to forty millimeters. So uh, thirteen is point three three. It's a little, a little bit closer. There we go. Twelve on that one. Point thirty. Okay, so I think that just about does it. These marks are from the uh, bore gauge going in. Now, something you can do after you've, uh, after you've done your cleaning up of your ports and everything, you can go back one last time with a ball hone, and these actually will help deeper those, but I wouldn't spend very much time in there. Just, uh, just give it three or four uh, strokes, as, as it should be, and everything will uh, everything will be good and it actually like i said it it does help deburr those edges but i think i'm good it it doesn't bother me that it's got a few marks there from my board gauge okay guys there you have it uh, yesterday we got it all bored today we got it uh, honed out the piston fitted and the rings ring gap checked and the uh, ports deburred, uh, chamfered I guess is what they call it. Anyhow, uh, it's a pretty good couple days work and I feel like I got a lot done. It is kind of a slow process, especially for me on uh, the boring. It's not something I do every day so I'm real cautious and I go very slowly at it to make sure that you don't mess up. That's, uh, you know, like I said before, if you, uh, if you go, too, go too big, if you miss a measurement, the only way to fix it is to go bigger. And if you're already as big as you can be, then you got a problem. Then you get sleeving or you got to find another cylinder. So, hey, thanks for going along on the ride. See you next video.